For the past four months, I've been on the hunt for millionaires. I spent countless hours calling, emailing, and DMing in order to gather enough millionaires to make this video. Something starting my business so young that took me a long time to learn is you really need to find the right people to join you in the endeavor because you're not going to be great at everything. So kind of just knowing what you're going to be great at and knowing what you need to find in other people, whether it be partners or employees to fill in areas where you're weak, that will ultimately make you unstoppable. Read, read, read. You know, um, Warren Buffett used to read five, he still reads 500 pages a day and that's non-negotiable. Um, especially if you're kind of, you want to know about your space, about what you want to be an entrepreneur in. Also, you want to learn about other spaces because that can help you innovate. You can cross-pollinate, you can learn what you did in other fields others, and bring it to yours. When you're deciding what you want to do, don't just base it on how much money you're going to make or what's going to make you the most amount of money. Figure out something that you can do that you're actually passionate about, that you actually want to do, that you love to do. And if you chase that, money will come and you'll actually be happy doing what you're doing every day. The best advice I could give an aspiring entrepreneur would be to be patient and also do what you love. When you do what you love, it's not like going to work. It's like you're not working at all. And mistakes will happen. Uh, there'll be problems that'll come up but you need to have the maturity to be able to understand the solutions to those problems. I myself personally have made every mistake once. The key is don't repeat that mistake. So I wish when I first started my business, someone had told me how hard credit was gonna to be to get and I would have signed up for every credit card I could get while I still had a job. Um, it's very difficult to get credit from institutions once you start because they see you as too high risk. Your biggest asset is your fearlessness is that your willingness to be naive and just go for it. Being, believing that you are invincible and you cannot lose. That is such a huge asset that later on in life, as life has gotten to you, as you have more experiences and you have more painful moments in your life, you'll lose that. And right now it is such a huge asset to be fearless and to just go for it and to not worry about what anybody else thinks. Tap into it and tap into it as often as you possibly can because that is where all the magic happens, is in the action. Find your passion what drives you, motivates you on a daily basis and long term. And the second part of that would be hard work and commitment. Never get up, give up. It requires a, a strong constitution to delve into what really inspires you and motivates you to be creative. Once you start to become successful on your own and ready to expand, don't assume that anybody else will work as hard as you do for your business because uh, now your future is in the hands of all your uh, employees and all your network. Everybody will do the best job they can. Nobody will work like you did. So as soon as you leave a task in the hands of others, it will be done 80% versus 100. Yeah, the first piece of advice I give anybody who's looking to start their own business, no matter what it is, is just to be prepared that there's going to be a period of time where no one is buying whatever it is that you're selling. And you need to have some reserves that are built up for that and just be ready. For the biggest thing it takes is the ability to, uh, or the courage to take a risk. Uh, most of the time, the life of an entrepreneur, the reason why you're going down that route is because big risk, big reward. So, um, you know, you take that risk and, um, you know, don't be afraid of what you do and just go after it. And, you know, I think that'll get you where you want to be at as long as you don't give up. Find a mentor. Find someone that's done it before. Be humble about it ask them for advice. Most people that are successful in any industry want to help. I think there are a lot of people like Elon Musk who come out with different uh, different paths for their entrepreneurship. You know, he starts out as like a developer and then goes on to uh, rockets and cars and everything, right? But not everybody's Elon Musk. I think it's really important to pick something that you're going to be passionate about from the beginning because if you get 20 years in and you feel like it's not the thing for you, you can lose a lot of momentum. Most entrepreneurs, when they're starting out, have a passion for the work that they do, and they're focused on producing their product or their service. But having a better knowledge of sales and marketing is something I think is very important. A lot of people get involved because they have that passion for the product, but maybe they don't 
know about sales and marketing as much as they should. And uh, that's something I really wish I had spent much more time studying when I was younger. One piece of advice I give to an aspiring entrepreneur is either commit right now or don't, but you're gonna have to make the decision right now that whatever you're gonna pursue, you're gonna be successful in no matter what, regardless of how many roadblocks or pitfalls you experience, that you're gonna get back up. Um, and just that life in everything, if you look at stocks, if you look at a heartbeat, it goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. This is the pattern of life and you start to recognize patterns. So the pattern of life is to go up and down. If you're going on the right trend, you're continuously doing that at a gradual pace of up. So one piece of advice I give to entrepreneurs is commit now or don't make the decision. It's to follow your heart, like follow what you love to do. Because for me in my journey, I realized that, you know, I started a bunch of different businesses, but I really love the journey of it. Even though I failed, I still love the process. And by loving the process, I was able to continue going until I got the result. You're going to have a lot of very obvious reasons in front of you why it seems like maybe you're crazy. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you should quit. And if you don't have a really, really clear picture of why you're working so damn hard to do it the non-traditional way, um, then you're just not going to be on a solid enough foundation to see it through because it really, really is that hard.